What do you mean by scalar quantity? It is very important. Scalar quantity means it depends on magnitude. It is independent of the direction. When I stop in the traffic signal at that particular instant of time, so that particular instant of time, what is my velocity? That is instantaneous velocity. Every time it is moving in two second, two second, two second, the car is moving. So equal interval of time, equal distance is covered. That is uniform motion. Hello everyone. I am Nishman Anjama, Faculty of Physics in Vidyashram Pre University College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. Welcome back to session 2 on chapter 3 Motion in a Straight Line. In this session, we will be studying what is velocity, what you mean by speed, what is uniform motion, and what is non uniform motion, what is acceleration, what is retardation, centripetal acceleration. So, we'll be discussing all these topics in today's session. In the previous session, in session 1 of motion in a straight line, we discussed what is motion and what are the types of motion. We studied what is frame of reference and we studied what is path length and displacement. So, if you have not watched the previous session of motion in straight line, please do watch before you come to session 2. Because understanding path length and displacement topics is important to understand velocity, speed and acceleration. Because we will be coming across the term path length and displacement in this session. So, to begin with, you can see velocity and speed. These two terms helps us to understand how fast or slow the object is moving. So these two terms helps us to understand how fast or how slow the object is moving. For example, you have a two straight roads, two parallel roads and there are two cars moving parallel in the parallel roads. You have a situation now where you have to find out which car is moving faster. So it is Easily you can identify when it is in the parallel road and when both the cars are moving along, you can tell which of the car is moving faster. Similarly, you have two parallel road and cars are moving in opposite direction. They are not moving in same, they are moving in opposite direction. When they are moving in opposite direction, so you cannot determine the speed, then the velocity is helpful here. The help of velocity, you can determine the fastness of the car. So, let us try to understand what is velocity and what is speed. So, firstly, what is velocity? Understand what is speed, then we will come to average velocity and average speed. So, velocity. Velocity, what do you mean by velocity? Velocity is equal to displacement per unit time. It is displacement per unit time. It is displacement per unit time. We have seen in units and measurement sessions, velocity is given by displacement per unit time. Displacement is measured in terms of meter and time has SI unit second. This is measured in terms of second. So the unit is nothing but meter per second. Meter per second is the unit of velocity and what is the dimensional formula for velocity it is zero dimension in m one dimension in l and minus one dimension in t so it has l t to the power minus one dimension it's always important to represent the velocity in square bracket when we talk about dimension of velocity so it is independent of mass but depends on length and Time. So, this is a dimensional formula of velocity. Velocity of a body is defined as the rate of displacement with respect to time. Displacement per unit time gives you velocity and the unit for velocity is meter per second. Displacement is measured in terms of meter and time is measured in terms of second. So, unit is meter per second. Before we go to average velocity, let us try to understand what do you mean by speed. What is speed then? So the distance moved by the body per unit time is speed. What is speed? Speed is distance 
per unit time gives you speed gives you speed and again distance is measured in terms of meter and time is measured in terms of second so unit is meter per second both has the unit meter per second but one thing you have to look at here carefully is distance is associated with speed distance is associated with speed i can write distance by time is also equal to path length by path length by time i can write speed as distance by time that is nothing but path length by time so it has a unit meter per second so speed is associated with distance speed is associated with path length when path length in the previous session i said path length is scalar quantity then speed is also a scalar quantity speed is also a scalar quantity so what do you mean by scalar quantity it is very important scalar quantity means it depends on magnitude it is independent of the direction speed is distance by time and velocity is displacement by time displacement what do you mean by displacement in the previous session we discussed what is displacement change of position so it is change of position by time is nothing but displacement so velocity is displacement by time so velocity is associated with displacement i have said that displacement is a vector quantity so velocity is also a vector quantity so what do you mean by vector quantity vector quantity means it depends on both magnitude as well as direction so next we have average velocity what is velocity velocity is displacement by time and speed is distance by time both has the unit meter per second whereas velocity is a vector quantity which depends on magnitude and direction speed is a scalar quantity which depends only on magnitude and does not depend on the direction so i hope velocity and speed is clear now what is this average velocity and average speed so what do you mean by average velocity so average velocity of the body is defined as the ratio of displacement of the body the ratio of displacement of the body to the time interval in which displacement occur in which displacement occur so suppose you have two objects say a and b a and b velocity is what displacement by time displacement is change in position with respect to time so x1 and x2 are position here a and b are two objects and a has position x1 as moved the displacement of object a is x1 at time t1 and b is displaced to position x2 with respect to time t2 so what is displacement i have mentioned in the previous session displacement is final position minus the initial position gives you change in the position so that is displacement so x2 final position minus the initial position divided by final time minus the initial time gives you delta x by delta t change in position by change in time gives you average velocity gives you average velocity so now let us try to understand this average velocity and average speed with the help of a example then what is speed here what is speed you can see here what is average speed then what do you mean by average speed average speed is nothing but total distance traveled divided by total time taken so average velocity is total displacement by total time taken and average speed is total distance traveled by total time taken so i can write this as total distance traveled i have explained in the previous session total distance traveled gives you the path length so i can write this as total path length by total time taken total time taken 
either this is also right and writing in terms of total path length by total time taken this is also right so this is average speed total distance traveled by total time taken and this is what is average velocity it is the change in position by change in time that's nothing but total displacement by total time gives you average velocity look at this example so this is your start point this is your start point and this is your end point so a boy is standing in the initial position say this is a the boy is standing in the initial position a and he moves towards the position b he walks towards position b say he covers a distance of 5 meter in time 1 second example a boy is in the initial position this is at the rest position a and he will start from position a and he will move to position b for 5 meters he covers the distance of 5 meter in 1 second again from point b in the road he moves towards c he moves towards point c this is his end point this is his end point so starting from a he moves to b and again from b he moved towards c so he again travels a distance of 5 meter in 1 second 5 meter in 1 second from a he was at rest from a he moved to b from b he moved to c now this is the boy is in the motion now i want to find out what is average velocity and average speed how will you calculate average speed how will you calculate average speed average speed is what total distance traveled by time taken total distance traveled total path the boy has taken from a to point c what is the total path it is 5 plus 5 that is nothing but 10 meter divided by what is the total time taken in 2 second so it is 2 second so you will get 5 meter per second meter per second so this is the average speed of the boy so with respect to average velocity how will you determine average velocity is what this is the total distance traveled in when i talk about average velocity velocity is displacement by time displacement is final position minus the initial position in case of displacement i am not bothered about the route taken by or the path followed by the boy i just want to see his start position and his end position final position minus the initial position gives you average velocity final position is what he has is he was in zero initially he has reached 5 meters here so it is 5 minus 0 it is 5 divided by what is the total time it is 2 second so this is in meter so this will give you some answer meter per second so that is how we calculate average velocity and average speed speed is the total distance traveled by the boy and average velocity is nothing but displacement by time displacement is change in position with respect to time so displacement is final position minus the initial position so in case the boy has gone from a to c again after reaching the end point he will again come back towards a twice a will go to b b will go to c again from c the boy return back to the start point a in that case the total distance will be double he is he is reached 5 meters again 5 meters in 1 second he will travel to b again in 5 meters one second he will travel back to a so average speed will be five one plus one will be the total speed the total distance travel five plus five again is going back five plus five divided by four second will give you a total distance traveled by this boy that is speed in case of displacement in case of average velocity i don't want what route how many times did he go how many times he came back i doesn't bother about that it is just the final position minus the initial position boy went to c he came back from c so his final and initial position is at a itself from a he went to c so that was his initial position from c he didn't stop in the second case he came back to a itself so initial minus final position is zero here initial minus final position is 
zero here. Displacement is zero and path length will be, if this is A, so AB plus BC, AB plus BC is the total distance. Again, he came back, that is CB plus again BA. So it is two times of this, two times of this is the total distance traveled by the boy. So this is about velocity, speed and what is the average velocity and what is the average speed is discussed in this slide. So after this you can see in the example, speed is simply how fast you are traveling. So how fast this car is traveling at a speed of 20 meter per second. This is the speed. I said speed is the scalar quantity. So only magnitude is important. It does not depend on direction. When it comes to velocity, look at this example. This car is traveling at a velocity of 20 meter per second east. Where it is traveling, the direction is moving towards east. So velocity is a vector quantity. So it is specifying the magnitude the magnitude as well as the direction that is east. So vector and scalar, I hope you are clear with what do you mean by vector quantity and scalar quantity. So this doesn't have direction, but in this case, the car, it is given the direction, which direction it is moving. So next you have instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed. What do you mean by instantaneous? At that instant of time, at that particular time, so it gives the specification that instant. So it is instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity. So you, you learned velocity, you learned average velocity and you're learning instantaneous velocity similarly with speed also. So let us go through the definition. The rate of change of position of body at a particular instant of time, at a particular point on its path is called instantaneous velocity of the body. I'll repeat, the rate of change of position of the body at a particular instant of time, at a particular point of its path is called instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed. What do you mean by instantaneous speed? At an instantaneous speed at an instant is equal to magnitude of instantaneous velocity at that instant. It is the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity gives you instantaneous speed. So what do you mean by that? Consider a straight line. Consider a straight line. Object, object A is at this point, at this starting point. After some time, after in the increase in time, so after one second, it moves at B. It moves at B. For starting point, it was at rest at A. After some time, one second, it has moved it to B. So, with it has covered a distance of say 2 meter. 2 meter. Then from B, again it moves to C. After some time, one second, again it has traveled 2 meter. From the point C, again it has moved to D. It has covered a distance 2 meter per second in one second. So as time increasing, you know that from the starting point, the object has moved to point D. It has covered so many distances. Now, what I want to know from here is, so if the distance here, the distance the object has to travel is say 60 kilometer for example, kilometer per hour, per hour. If this was the total distance the object had to cover. Now, when you have to go from one point to another, from A point to D point, so your speed, velocity, will, will it be constant? At this point, maybe when you're going from the point A, the speed will be different. When you reach the point B, maybe there is a traffic light, there is a traffic signal you have to stop. So the, your velocity will be low. Again, when you, you have to raise the speed, when you have to go from point B to point C. Again, there will be variation of speed and velocity at each point. You have to buy something, you'll stop your car, the object has to stop. Then again, the speed and velocity will vary. So instantaneous velocity and speed means at this particular time, when you reach this particular time, what is your speed? So when you reach point C, somewhere close to point C, at this particular time, 
what is your speed or what is your velocity at this particular time at this instant of time i want to calculate what is velocity so magnitude of that velocity will give you instantaneous speed for example i am traveling from one place to another place in a car i am traveling in a car say i am traveling with a speed of 50 km per hour 50 km per hour and that is my velocity that is the velocity with which i am moving from one place to another place i will give so many stops in between i reach the starting point to end point i'll give many stops in between so my speed and velocity will vary when i stop to buy something again my speed will be zero again i'll rise i'll the speed will be maybe 20 km per hour then it will be 30 km per hour so the speed will vary the speed will vary so at that particular point when i stop the car at that particular point what is the velocity what is the velocity or what is my velocity when i stop in the traffic signal at that particular instant of time so that particular instant of time what is my velocity that is instantaneous velocity the magnitude of instantaneous velocity will give you instantaneous speed that is equal to instantaneous speed magnitude of instantaneous velocity at that instant now i've stopped here i want to know what is the instantaneous velocity so the magnitude of that instantaneous velocity is equal to instantaneous speed you can see in this diagram this is kilometer per hour is in the y axis and here you have x axis so now what the car is moving in this path so this is the total path that the car has to be covered this is the average the red line indicates average so when the car is traveling from here when it reaches this point this particular point this is the time scale and here you have kilometer so kilometer in y axis time in the x axis so at this particular time at this particular time and car reaches here what is your velocity so that is the instantaneous velocity magnitude of that instantaneous velocity is equal to instantaneous speed so i hope this topic is clear to you next we have uniform and non uniform motion i have already discussed in session 1 about uniform motion and non uniform motion if you have not watched my previous session on motion in straight line please do watch so what do you mean by uniform uniform same an object moving along a straight line so in motion in a straight line we are considering a linear motion a rectilinear motion so object is moving in a straight line so this is the road the car is moving in a straight line covers equal distance in equal interval of time you can see here it is covering equal distance in equals it was in 0 meter then it is 4 meter then again plus 4 meter is 8 meter plus 4 meter is 12 meter it is covering equal interval of time 2 second 2 second 2 second every time it is moving in 2 second 2 second 2 second the car is moving so equal interval of time equal distance is covered that is uniform motion so what do you mean by non uniform motion then non uniform means not same it covers unequal distance in equal interval of time object is moving in a straight line a car is moving in a road a car is moving in a road it covers unequal distance in equal interval of time what do you mean by unequal distance here here you can see compare these two images it was in 0 meter it has to be here you can see 4 meter again plus 4 meter 4 meter so there is a equal distance coverage but here there is no equal distance coverage after 2 second time there it is equal in equal interval of time it is covering unequal distance after 0 meter it was supposed to be 4 meter but it is 1 meter again after that it is 10 meter then it is 25 meter there is no similarities in the distance covered it is unequal so unequal distance covered by the object in equal interval of time compare these two image you will get the idea of uniform and non-uniform motion similarly we have uniform velocity non-uniform velocity uniform speed and non-uniform speed 
uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration or non uniform velocity is also called variable non uniform means there is some variable velocity so similar to uniform motion and non uniform motion we can describe non uniform velocity non uniform acceleration and uniform velocity and uniform acceleration but the only difference in the definition will be here you have distance in terms of speed which is distance distance by time but when you describe uniform velocity an object moving along a straight line covers equal displacement in equal interval of time so instead of distance we'll have displacement term in case of uniform velocity and non uniform velocity similarly when you talk about uniform acceleration and you un non uniform acceleration so what is acceleration change will come to that in the next slide change in velocity by time taken so you have velocity in case of acceleration so when you talk about uniform acceleration object moves along a straight line so you'll have the instead of distance instead of displacement you'll have velocity term when you describe uniform acceleration similarly when you describe non uniform acceleration you will have a terminology velocity it covers unequal instead of distance you will have velocity change in velocity so that is uniform motion and non uniform motion how i hope it's clear how you describe uniform velocity as well as uniform and non uniform acceleration so next we have acceleration accelerate acceleration what do you mean by this terminology acceleration here so let us read the definition acceleration of the body is the rate of change of its velocity with respect to time distance by time speed displacement by time velocity change in velocity by time gives you acceleration so it is velocity by time gives you acceleration change in velocity with respect to time gives you acceleration so acceleration has a unit you can see it is meter per second square meter per second square is the unit of acceleration and dimensional formula for acceleration is m0 zero dimension in m one dimension in l and minus two dimension in time so this is the dimensional formula for acceleration and acceleration is a vector quantity when it is vector quantity you should be very careful that it depends on both magnitude as well as direction like velocity acceleration is also vector quantity why because velocity is associated with acceleration velocity is a vector quantity hence forth acceleration is a vector quantity similarly you can see average acceleration how we described average velocity average speed similarly you can describe average acceleration as average acceleration over a time interval in a given time interval the average acceleration is defined as the ratio of change in velocity to the time interval ratio of change in velocity to the time interval that is nothing but you can write v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 will give you delta v by delta t similar to velocity it was change in position that is displacement by time taken here you have two objects say a and b a has velocity v1 and b has velocity v2 a1 has time t1 and a b has time t2 so final minus initial so change in velocity how we find out this change change is the final minus initial so v2 minus v1 velocity divided by t2 time by t1 time will give you change in velocity by time interval this is the delta t is the in that time interval so change in velocity is given so that is average acceleration v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 so it's a vector quantity meter per second square is the unit of acceleration this is a dimensional formula for acceleration similarly you can describe what is instantaneous acceleration 
you understood what is instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed at that particular point what is your speed or what is your velocity that particular time what is your velocity that is instantaneous velocity similarly instantaneous acceleration when you move from one place to another place your speed your acceleration will not be same sometimes you may move fast some areas you may move slow finally you from the starting point till the ending point when you reach your destination at last the speed will be varying at some point will move very fast at some point maybe in the crossing of the roads there you will be slow then again you will raise your speed so there will be change in the acceleration so when you stop if you are moving very fast in the highway at that particular point at that time at that 20 minutes what was your speed what was your acceleration so at that instant of time you are calculating acceleration so that is your instantaneous acceleration a body is said to have uniform acceleration uniform acceleration if its velocity changes by equal amount in equal interval of time however small the time interval may be so i will repeat listen instantaneous acceleration a body is said to have uniform acceleration body is moving with uniform acceleration only if its velocity if its velocity changes change in velocity is acceleration its velocity changes by equal amount in equal interval of time however small might be the time interval this is the acceleration you can see initially was at position a it was here the car was initially at position a so i gave some acceleration to my car the car started moving in the road so it is moving with some speed so at this at time say 2 second the car has reached this point after that again change in time maybe after 4 second the car is traveling towards point b so the acceleration is more the velocity might be changing the change in velocity so from point a that's the initial position car was at point a so i accelerated my car the 2 second it was here after the time increases as the time increasing so change in velocity it is reaching point b so this is what we call acceleration i hope acceleration and instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration is clear the car was at point a so i accelerated with my car with some speed so it is traveling towards point b from the start point it is heading towards the end point that is b so the time is changing at each point at this particular time my car is here so i want to calculate what is the acceleration so that is instantaneous acceleration next you again have the types here acceleration declaration centripetal acceleration uniform acceleration what do you mean by these terminologies here you can see this car if the direction of acceleration if the direction of acceleration car is same as the that of velocity the same as that velocity if the direction of acceleration and the direction of velocity are same you can see the arrow indicating they are in the same direction that means magnitude of velocity increases magnitude of velocity increases that means object falling under gravity object falling under gravity that means acceleration is what here it is increasing so acceleration is positive here acceleration is positive so in this case what do you mean by the term declaration or you can also call it as retardation declaration or retardation what do you mean by that if the direction of acceleration is opposite you can see here the velocity is moving towards right the acceleration arrow is towards left that means the direction of acceleration is opposite to that of velocity so that means magnitude of velocity is decreasing it decreases that means acceleration is negative it is negative acceleration is negative if they are opposite in direction if they are moving with same direction both are moving with same direction that acceleration is positive you can plot the graph for that in our next session we shall study the graphical representation for 
velocity time and position time. So next you have centripetal acceleration. What do you mean by centripetal acceleration? If the direction of acceleration is perpendicular, this represents perpendicular. You have a line like this, AB, BC. This BC, this BC line is perpendicular to AB. This is the this is how we represent perpendicular. If the direction of acceleration is perpendicular direction of velocity, the magnitude of velocity remains the same, but the direction of velocity changes. Magnitude will be same at the direction of velocity will change. So that is centripetal acceleration. The direction of acceleration is perpendicular to direction of velocity. Then magnitude of velocity will be same. The direction of velocity will be, will change. The direction of velocity will change. Next you have uniform acceleration. Uniform means same, similar. So change of velocity by equal amounts in equal interval of time. So what is acceleration? Change in velocity by time, meter per second square. Change of velocity by in equal amounts, the change of velocity in equal interval of time gives you uniform acceleration. So declare acceleration, you got to know what it is. So they are moving in the same direction, then the magnitude of velocity increases, magnitude of velocity increases, acceleration is positive. Declaration or retardation, if the velocity direction of acceleration is opposite to direction of velocity, then the magnitude of velocity, magnitude means what? Numerical value assigned to a measured quantity is magnitude. Magnitude of velocity will decrease if it is decreasing, acceleration is negative. Retardation comes if you throw up a ball. So it acts against the gravity. You're throwing ball, the gravity is acting downward. So that is declaration acceleration is negative centripetal acceleration direction of acceleration is perpendicular to direction of velocity then magnitude of velocity will be same but the direction of velocity will change if perpendicular is the condition uniform acceleration change of velocity by equal amounts in equal interval of time is uniform acceleration is uniform acceleration. So this is about acceleration. That's all for today's session. In this session, we studied the important topic that is very important that we come across around us in day-to-day -day life. That is velocity, what speed we are moving, what is the acceleration. And in acceleration, we studied acceleration, declaration, centripetal acceleration, uniform acceleration. So velocity is change in position by time. That is nothing but displacement per unit. Time is velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity. What is speed? Distance traveled. Average speed is total distance traveled by time taken or total path length covered by the object by time taken. So speed is a scalar quantity because distance associated with speed is a scalar quantity. Then we studied what is instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity. At that particular time, what is the velocity? So the magnitude of that velocity is equal to instantaneous speed. So next we studied what is acceleration. What do you mean by acceleration? So change in velocity, velocity by time is acceleration. So meter per second square is the unit and acceleration is associated with velocity. When velocity is a vector quantity, acceleration again is a vector quantity. Vector depends on both magnitude and direction. Scalar depends only on magnitude. It is independent of the direction. So next in acceleration, we study instantaneous acceleration. At that particular point, a car is moving at some speed, then at that point, what is the acceleration? So that is instantaneous acceleration. Average acceleration is V2 minus V1 divided by T2 minus T1 is gives you change in velocity by 
time interval that is average acceleration then we studied uniform and non uniform motion uniform means same it covers equal distance in equal interval of time non uniform means it covers unequal distance in equal interval of time similarly you can define uniform speed uniform velocity uniform acceleration and non uniform velocity non uniform acceleration non uniform speed the difference is there will be distance in case of speed displacement in case of velocity and velocity in case of acceleration so that's all for today's session next i'll be coming up with more physics session on motion and straight line until then see you all take care have a good day thank you